Hello, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy Imperials video. Today, let's talk about the Naboo raid, shall we? I just got done recording like a 20 minute rant video. Not really a rant, not really like a structured video. This probably won't be very structured either. But let's talk about the Naboo raid and its weird, weird like intricacies that, not really intricacies, but weird, weird the weirdness that it is that has caused people a lot of issues in this game uh, over the last week and a half that it's been out now. So let's start with the, actually, we'll just go ahead and rearrange these teams real quick so that way I don't have to scroll up and down as much, but let's start with the two best teams for this raid, shall we? Let's start off with the Gungans. So the Gungans uh, and to a lesser extent, the Queen Amidala team are the nostalgia bait for this raid because if you are a fan of the phantom menace and you really enjoyed the stuff for the battle of naboo i mean i enjoyed the battle of naboo like the that but did i buy into it no um mostly because you know having to buy six characters worth of like shards is expensive but let's let's talk about like just the gungans as a whole first so we're here on Doi's account right now because on my main account I have all the Gungans Relic 3 or higher and I'm slowly working towards that here on Doya. The reason why they my Gungans are not done here on Doya is because I had I, I did not get bo back in June and I got her just this week on you know his account here. So woohoo! I have bo on both accounts now. But anyways. The Gungans aren't the hardest things to farm let's be honest i mean yeah boss nass is what a hard node farm on the dark side yeah 20 energy expensive tarpools he is a cantina farm he is one of two cantina farms that we have right now for the teams for this battle of naboo raid and obviously you have boomadir being a light hard a light side hard battle and then we have wow that was one drop woohoo You've got the Lynx, who is a fleet hard node farm at 20 energy as well. So, you know, not fun. And we didn't get a single job for him there. But, and you've also got to look into the fact that they are all cryo heavy for gearing. I mean, I've got them gear 11, waiting to get them to gear 12, but I got to get them the shards, obviously. So, but yeah, the Gungans, and then like the Gungans, if you want to get the best, best bang for your bike, buck, you got to have them you know, super high relic, like seven, eight, or nine. Like if you do relic nine, then you'll have like a really annoying team on Gak to, for people to fight and you'll have the max uh, level run you can do and all that fun jazz. But it's really important to apparently have this uh, Omni on the Boomadir so that way you get more stacks of plasma shielding. And I mean, honestly, just getting stacking defense and defense pin and offense is great as well. So but yeah, the Gungans... Where you know the issue is if you didn't buy them ahead of time, you're still working on them, obviously. So there's that issue with that team. Let's move on to the Queen Amidala team, the other part of the nostalgia bait for this raid. Queen Amidala herself, obviously a Cantina, not Cantina. She's not Cantina. She's Conquest, you dummy. She was a Conquest character, and if you didn't get her in the first three months that she was the prime rewards for Conquest, you are now having to wait for these next three Conquests to get her shards i mean i don't have to worry about that because i got her unlocked but like 20 shards at what level is that i don't know what crate level that is whatever that one is but then like max crate with the luthan stuff right now you only get 30 shards i mean sure you get you can get i think five shards from the wandering scavenger in the sectors yeah you can get five for 475 of the conquest games uh currency we're going to spend 600 crystals for five shards of Queen Amidala to help accelerate your grind for her. But, you know, that's that's one issue. You know, if you didn't max out Conquest, yeah, that's annoying as, as all be. But then you have the issue of Padawan Obi-Wan, who is the second of the uh, Cantina farms for these characters, for this, uh, not character, for this raid. You know, uh, he's 10 energy, no, not, this hard, not the most expensive and most prohibitive, but I just... Like, I just got him to 7-star today. So there's that issue. You know, you don't... People have to stop their Relic grind for maybe some other teams, like the Luminara team, or the Gungans, or even the Queen Amidala team, because you gotta halt it to farm up Captain Tarples and Padawan Obi-Wan. 
which causes issues because then that just starts snowballing and so oh i can't get this team worked on because i had to get these two farmed up and oh maybe now i still don't have stap done i mean i have stapped on the way here but that's not besides the point anyways so you see how like that could cause issues you start snowballing and all that into more and more like pushing your like your potential score like your potential high score further and further back it doesn't include the randomness of the raid of itself like causing you issues like the droidicus constantly just rolling in and in and in and in to the damage immunity and you're unable to dispel it so you can damage them to move on to the next wave which gets lets them get more enraged and causes more issues there but anyways let's talk about the third character for the queen amidala team master qui-gon there was like people um in my alliances server thinking hey maybe we'll get master qui-gon as a uh farm this week well i imagine by the time i get this video up that will still be still not be the case because well we don't have a node for him yet and that's the issue is he going to be a fleet hard node is he going to be you know just a light side or dark side hard farm because like look at like my like doy is master quicon is gear 11 i have the gear ready to get him to gear 12 but i don't have the shards to do so because i I just don't because I didn't wail out on him whenever he was a marquee. So you've got so that, that's where we are right now. So far into the teams here, we've got the Gungans, which were, you know, well, all four of them were marquees, and they even get like the best reward. You have to have Jar Jar, and unless you wailed out on them to get Jar Jar the first time, you have to wait till August the fifth to get Jar Jar. And you've got Queen Amidala herself was a conquest character. And you got the two Pat, two uh, Jedi that were marquees, which makes it even harder to um you know get the team up and running because you're having to farm two more two more marquees on top of the four you're having to do for the gungans so there's those two teams now we'll look at the luminara team and the keller and beck team in conjunction because i i kind of have the teams all mixed up because like there's there's also two different trains of thoughts on how to do the Luminara teams because you can do a Luminara team with Kit Fisto. You have to do Luminara and Kit Fisto together. And then you could run her with Kiati Mooney, Plo Koon, or Shock T. Or you can do it like in this other variation that I think Scribe suggested in one of his most recent videos, which is Luminara, Plo, Ayla, Qui-Gon, and Kit Fisto, which lets you have a high, maybe a high-ish damage Keller and Beck team with a Keller and Shock T, Grandmaster Yoda, Mace, and Kiati Mundi. So let's talk about that now because um, we can we will you we will definitely use Doya's account as the example here because um, I did not buy the pack on Doya here, but I bought it on my main account. You know the twenty dollar one where you got Luminara, Kit Fisto, Plo Koon, Eth Koth, and uh, Qui Gon Jinn, all the Relic Five. So I'm now in the predicament of I need to now gear up. Luminara, Kit Fisto, Plo Koon to Relic 5. I gotta push Ayla Secure to Relic 5 maybe so I can get better rewards that way. And that's the issue is I gotta, you know, I gotta gear up these characters that I otherwise didn't have geared up and that's more cryos, more gear 12 gear, more Relic mats. And since I am still relicking up the, well now Captain Tarples because I just finished my paddle on Obi-Wan farm, uh the like luminara and Plo Koon will take will be even further back on my relic list grind you know and there's that issue like it keeps it keeps coming back to gearing i guess really it's, it's i mean this game is a gear management game let's be completely honest but like it comes back to how how prepared were you for this raid like if you're super prepared for this raid then this isn't really much of an issue for you obviously because like you can just be like, oh, well, I had all of them ready to go and I can just smash the highest score I can and may need to remod, may not need to, you know? Or you're in my predicament where you had to buy the pack maybe or, you know, start panic gearing people up just so that way you can even do decently in the raid. And, you know, it's just, what, what do you, what do you, what do you to do, you know? Um, and like, and then we can talk about the, Darth, we can talk about the Separatist issue real quick because that's its own can of worms because apparently CG is looking into fiddling with the um, with the B2 leadership because of if you do B2 with um, 
Darth Maul and Darth Sidious still constantly be assisting him whenever he does um, his AoEs, which is good because then it helps you kill more of the B1s more quickly and all that fun stuff. But, like, they're looking at changing that, and then, like, for the uh, Darth Maul team, you gotta remod, you know, Sidious and Maul, you may need to remod new gun ray to be faster. It's just, like, all this stuff you gotta do, and each run is not a guaranteed, like, oh, I'll get it one and done. Like, uh, whenever I was doing my earlier video, my Darth Maul run failed multiple times because I kept getting stuck behind Droidica constantly going to damage immunity. So, you know, it, it's just... There's a lot wrong with this raid. They have not really um, gotten like really covered. I mean, yeah, no, we're, we're only we're only two weeks into its cycle. I know, I get it, I get it, I get it. People are saying, "Oh, we'll stop complaining about the raid," like on Reddit and YouTube comments and all that. Like people are like telling other players that have issues with this raid to not complain about it and just deal with it, which really doesn't really help the arguments that we have of like, yeah, but like if one run takes 10 plus minutes to get properly right so like get it properly set up right so so you can get the max score it, it kind of like becomes like how much time do i want to sink into this because like in, in the middle of this week right now we like on in my guild we've got the raid that's about to end we've got territory battles we've got conquest and then next week we'll still have conquest but we'll have you know grand arena starting wednesday and then we'll have the raid starting up sometime around then as well so it's like you've got all this to do and when does it become too much to do like if you're spending all this time doing the raid then or like the raid territory battles conquest runs gax stuff like if you have all that combining all together at once people just want to stop playing so i don't know i know people have like said like suggested that they need to like n like heavily adjust the lower levels of the raid because well i mean you can load up the lowest relic, like the you can load up the lowest level of the raid and fight relic characters, which doesn't make any sense. You you roll up roll blah, 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 you load up the gear twelve one, and you fight. Guess what? Relic characters with your non relic characters. So, how exactly is that fair and beneficial to the player to have to smash their head up against this wall constantly, whenever? you i mean yeah like look at this relics relics relic relic and it's just like what what are you to do kind of thing you know but i'll leave that that um let me know what you think of this raid in the comments below i mean having people having to spend egregious amounts of money to even get the teams partially set up ready to go seems kind of an kind of ridiculous to be completely honest because you know, yeah, why do you have to spend all this money to get these characters ready to go and all that fun stuff? But anyways, like I said, let me know what you think about this right in the comments below. I'm going to see how long it takes me to actually get a decent run <laughs> with my Luminar team. And until then, um, yeah, thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys later. I hope you have a good rest of your day.